It's Saturday Night, a television show produced by and for the nation's counterculture. A trend-setting, side-splitting, idol-smashing show for TV's best and brightest undiscovered talent. Saturday Night Live, SNL, made stars out of Chevy Chase, Gilda Radner, Billy Crystal, Martin Short, Eddie Murphy, among others. It spawned a feature film, Wayne's World, that's grossed over $98 million in its first eight weeks. SNL's been called the show that changed television, the most influential comedy institution of its generation. 17 seasons still going strong. How do they do it? We'll find out. We're at Rockefeller Center in New York City with executive producer Lorne Michaels, writer-producers Robert Smigel and Jim Downey, and stars Dana Carvey and Kevin Nealon. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome these creative, irreverent, and madcap people of Saturday Night Live! Direct from the NBC studios at 30 Rockefeller Center in New York City, this is a special edition of McLaughlin. And now your host, John McLaughlin. We have to put first things first. Congratulations, Lorne Michaels, on the birth of your son, Henry Michaels. Thank you, John. When we Lawn, Saturday Night Live was your creation. Well, a lot, a lot of people contributed, but yes, I'll, I'll, I'll go along with it. 1972 with my or 73, you had the idea. 1975, it came into existence. What were you trying to do with Saturday Night Live back then? Uh, I think we were just trying to uh, get on the air, I think. <laughs> uh, you were uh, also a stand up comic, weren't you? Uh, no, no, well, I, I did perform, but I wasn't actually a stand up. No. Um, I think that uh, we were just trying to do a show that uh, would make the people who were doing the show laugh. Uh, and there didn't seem to be a show that represented those people on television at that time. Now, you have a lot of interests. Your interests are comedy and film and music and politics. To some degree, yeah. Right? Yeah. And you managed to get them all into this, I guess, in a sense, a variety show, isn't it? Yeah, I, I think it was a, a question of how to keep people, particularly writers, interested uh, over the course of a year. And if there was enough things to write about, enough things that changed every week, then I think that was possible. Where did you get the idea of bringing on a, an outsider to host the show, to give it a center of gravity? Where did you get that idea? That was basically uh, my idea. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin Nealon? Yeah. Was it your idea? Well, I don't <laughs> take credit for it usually, but I'll, you know. I thought that was, might have been Carby's idea. Were you around then, Carby? No, no, no. I was a fetus with shoes at that time. <laughs> <laughs> I was learning my ABCs. You're, all, you're older than you look, though, Carby. I'm 36. You're 36 years old. But I read old. at a 39 year old level. <laughs> I'm always learning and growing. I think I love you. You know, John, a long time ago, a small boy had a dream. That has nothing to do with what I'm about to say. No, that, I was in, uh, I was, uh, when the show started, I was a sophomore in college. College? Was yeah. that on the West Coast? I'm educated. Oh, was that in Minnesota? Minnesota? Montana. Montana, right? Close. Yeah, but I went to school at San Francisco State. You were born in Montana? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Missoula. Yeah. So um, why did you bring in the fascinating stuff? <laughs> Why did you, where did you get this idea to bring in an outsider I, I, to host I, the show? I had done a great deal of, of series television, and one of the things that burnt people out the fastest was figuring out what Sonny had to say to share at the beginning of each program. So the idea of a different host every week would make it more special and make, uh, uh, make it different every week. Now, you have a lot of freedom with the show. You had it back then. Yes. NBC never interfered with you back Almost then. Almost never, no. You remember Monty Python and ABC, how ABC kind of crowded Monty Python, and therefore it didn't really make it? You never had experienced that, did you? Uh, no. Uh, we, we, uh, I think because we were live, uh, we went on the air the first time, and um, uh, there was some reaction the first weekend. Uh, NBC suggested to you at the beginning that you bring on Bob Hope and the U.S. Marine Marching Band. Right, and you yeah. said, hey, wait a minute, this is more like who? Well, well we, we thought that that would send the wrong signal to the audience. Yeah, you said, you said <laughs> forget that, this is more like Richard Pryor and, and, and Steve Martin. Right, right. yeah. I think, it was, uh, I think it was just trying to, uh, I, I think we were all pretty much, all the people who were doing the show at that time were convinced that if we could just do a show, uh, a show that we liked, uh, that it would be popular. So you were there in the beginning. 
You left in five years. We're going to get to that in a minute. Okay. Uh, and then you returned in another five years. So you've been, you're in your 12th year at the program. Not consecutively, but 12, no. 12 1975 to 1980, 1985 to the present. Time. Right. Jim, when did you join the show? Second season. Second season. Now, you are a writer, but you're also the principal producer on the lawn, right? Right. Just for the last four years. Four years. Yeah. And when did you start writing? Uh, 76. I joined the show around Christmas of 76. Now, the gentleman sitting to your right, who's uh, fidgeting there rather nervously, is Bob Smigel, right? He's also <laughs> squinting a little bit, and I think he's getting ideas even as we talk, right? Wrong! <laughs> what? What? John, he's the guy who thought to do you, and he writes all your stuff. He writes my material, right? Yeah. Uh, he taught me how to do writing. you. He did? Yes. What do you mean he we taught... We started you around mean, 11 a.m. I woke up drenched in sweat, nude in the fetal position. <laughs> <laughs> right, issue one, issue one, issue one. Wrong. Issue four. <laughs> it was worth it, though. The only impression I've ever taught him. He's a brilliant, he's the best. Is he? Yes. Yeah, mutual admiration society. I thought you said that <laughs> I thought you said that Murphy was the best. The best what? I'm talking yeah. alone. Oh, I, I no, I didn't. I was wondering. You said that in print. I did? No. I, I no? said that. No. <laughs> did you say that? I, I felt it at the time. You know, you, know, you look a lot like the subliminal man. <laughs> and I think you're a very, I think you're a very good looking guy. Not. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you do the subliminal that. man? Yes, I, I do do that. How do you like doing that? <laughs> was that your idea? <laughs> yeah, that was uh, that was uh, an idea that I had, that, and uh, it came from a, a guy out in California who was a character actor, Ed Peck, who used to do these things called tagging. <clears throat> so we came up with a, you know, we combined that. I went to school for marketing too, so we combined the two and did it on the first uh, season of the show. But uh, subliminal <clears throat> advertising being part of marketing, right? right? I'm just closing the circuit for you there. Right. Yeah. It was, it was an encompassing thing right there. Right. Now, what's your most memorable contribution to Saturday Night Live, Kevin Nealon? Do you think you can tell Financially? us? Financially? No, no, no. no. <laughs> oh, oh, just, uh... I mean... I think the thing that I enjoyed doing the most was uh, Hans and Franz with Dana. We yeah. still do that? Yeah. Oh, how old is that? Five years old? Four years old? Four or five. Five yeah. years old? Yeah. And you really still pump with. that up every week and get more mileage out of it, right? Every week it's on. Yeah, but you, you don't keep all your... <laughs> You don't keep all your sketches. You don't keep all your sketches. Why did you drop the church lady? Why? I'm terrified. This is like my nightmare. Why? Why did you not do the church lady? Issue! I want to know now. Well, I'll, I'll do it again. I just, you know, I got tired of wearing the dress. Now I just wear the dress in my private life. I think it's so special. How do you say that? Yeah. How do you say that? Well, well, well. Well, John McLaughlin, well, aren't we interesting? Well, double-breasted. Mm. <laughs> that means nothing. Get a laugh. <laughs> no, I might bring her back sometime. I almost brought her back with Sharon Stone, but I thought it would be too hot. Too, too hot, hot for Sharon? Too hot for the show. Oh, too the hot for the show. The censors never would have allowed Hey, it. by the way, there was quite a little controversy you guys had, right? I noticed you pulled a 9.6 on a 26 share, however. Yep. So that little uprising or was it hurt anything, did it? Well, it, it, it killed about 20 minutes of comedy for uh, <laughs> in the studio, but other than that, it did no harm whatsoever. We'll be right back.